Welcome to a quick introduction to the classic 1945 film, They Were Expendable. The movie tells the story of brave soldiers stationed in the Pacific during World War II. But there's more to it than just action and heroism. As you watch, get ready for a mix of emotions with moments that are funny, shocking, and deeply moving. Ever wondered how a movie like this could affect someone's life? Or maybe you're curious about when people first watch the gripping narrative of the film. Keep these questions in mind as you dive into its world. After watching, we want to hear from you. What's your most special memory or personal experience related to the movie? Share your stories and thoughts in the comments below. Your voice adds depth to the conversation. Get set for an unforgettable journey. Let's explore together. Released in 1945, the film They Were Expendable made a lasting impression on audiences and the movie industry. Its portrayal of the bravery and sacrifice of PT boat crews during World War II deeply affected viewers, especially those who lived through the war. The movie's realistic depiction of combat and its emotional depth struck a chord with people, earning praise from critics and becoming a significant part of film history. The influence of They Were Expendable can be seen in later war films as it inspired filmmakers to aim for realism and emotional impact in their portrayals of wartime events. Its themes of courage, friendship, and the cost of war are still relevant today, reminding us of the sacrifices made by military personnel. Despite being released almost 80 years ago, the movie continues to be praised for its moving story, memorable acting, and powerful message. Its portrayal of ordinary people facing extraordinary challenges continues to engage audiences and remind us of the strength of the human spirit in difficult times. In summary, the movie's enduring significance comes from its authentic depiction of wartime experiences and its ability to connect with audiences on an emotional level. Its themes of sacrifice and heroism continue to inspire viewers, securing its place in film history. In the 1945 movie, They Were Expendable, John Wayne's exemption from military service during World War II stirred controversy. At 34 years old during Pearl Harbor, Wayne's family status earned him a deferment. Despite repeatedly expressing willingness to join John Ford's military unit, he postponed enlistment for one more film. Wayne's studio, Republic Pictures, intervened, fearing loss of their star. Wayne, citing his influence as America to fans, chose promotional tours over military service, prompting Ford's criticism. Ironically, though set in the Philippines, the film's tropical scenes were shot entirely in Florida. In a scene, actor Jack Pennock, playing Doc, collects tobacco, revealing the initials JP inside his hat. This detail adds a personal touch to the character. In They Were Expendable, Marshall Thompson portrays Ensign Gardner, who mistakenly drinks dishwater, thinking it was soup. This gag is reminiscent of a similar scene in Mr. Roberts. John Bulkley, who had connections with the Kennedy family, recruited John F. Kennedy into PT service. Bulkley later had the honor of promoting Kennedy to rear admiral when he became president. The real-life motor torpedo boat Squadron 3 in the Philippines during World War II had six 77-foot Elko PT boats, all lost in combat or destroyed to prevent capture. In the film, Squadron 3's boats are depicted by two 80-foot Elko and four 78-foot Huckins PT boats. They Were Expendable, released in 1945, is a war film that delves into a significant chapter of Navy history, the evacuation of General MacArthur and his family from the Philippines. John Wayne, a prominent figure in the film, recalled the intense atmosphere during the recreation of this event. Despite initial disparaging remarks from Navy personnel, the portrayal of MacArthur commanded respect, instilling awe even among the skeptics. Robert Montgomery, who portrayed a PT commander in the film, drew upon his first-hand experiences from serving in that role during pivotal battles like Guadalcanal and Normandy. Similarly, James Curtis Havens, a second unit director and explosives expert, contributed his expertise to ensure authenticity in the film's action sequences. Post-World War II, most PT boats stationed overseas were deemed expendable and were destroyed to save costs. Made primarily of plywood, these vessels were considered obsolete and were stripped of their engines and armaments before being burned. Only a handful of PT boats stationed in the U.S. managed to evade destruction. The film's attention to historical detail and the involvement of individuals with real wartime experience contributed to its authenticity, making it a compelling portrayal of the sacrifices made during World War II. 
They Were Expendable is a movie adapted from William L. White's book of the same name, which chronicles the experiences of Lieutenant John Bulkley and Lieutenant Robert Kelly. Kelly and U.S. Army nurse Peggy Smith took legal action against MGM, John Wayne, and Donna Reed due to their portrayals in the film. Kelly was depicted as impulsive, while Nurse Smith was romantically linked to him. Wayne, Reed, and MGM settled out of court for small amounts. Barry Goldwater, a friend of Wayne's, visited the set during filming, and Wayne later supported Goldwater's presidential campaign in 1964. Amelia Edwards, the daughter of one of the characters, married musician Lauren Sheff in 2004, but they are now divorced. In the 1945 movie, They Were Expendable, a notable scene features a PT boat returning to base after sinking an enemy cruiser. Attached to the mast is a broom symbolizing the naval tradition of sweeping the enemy from the sea. During a dance sequence, she reveals she's from Iowa, while he mentions being from upstate New York. Interestingly, both actors, Donna Reed and John Wayne, hail from Iowa. Director John Ford delegated post-production tasks, including scoring to others. Despite later objections to some of the added music, the film's leisurely pace aligns with Ford's vision. In a scene on the docks, a ship named the Lucian P. Libby is in the background. John Ford, influenced by his English teacher Lucian Libby during his high school years, utilized the ship's name in the film. Screenwriter Frank Weed remained on standby for necessary rewrites as John Ford frequently altered scenes or capitalized on spontaneous events. During filming, a fire broke out on Key Biscayne, prompting Ford to send a second unit to capture the incident for the attack on Manila Bay scene. Granville Owen made his debut under the stage name Jeff York in this film. He was billed under his new name for the first time. Wayne later recalled Ford's penchant for seizing unforeseen opportunities, such as filming Manila burning during a fire. Ford's approach was characterized by flexibility, as he would adapt the script to accommodate unexpected circumstances. They were expendable features notable anecdotes from its production. The film's director, John Ford, sustained a leg injury during filming. Similarly, Ward Bond, who portrayed a character in the movie, faced adversity as it was his first project after a severe leg injury caused by a car accident. Bond, who almost lost his left leg due to the accident, persevered in his recovery during the filming process. John Wayne, known for his role as Lieutenant Ryan in the film, delivered a poignant moment at a funeral service within the storyline. Wayne's character reads Requiem, a poem by Robert Louis Stevenson honoring fallen servicemen. Interestingly, Wayne had also recited parts of the same poem in another film, The Wings of Eagles, which revolved around the life of the screenwriter of They Were Expendable, Spig Weed. Moreover, the movie intertwines personal connections, as exemplified by the relationship between Robert Montgomery and Julie Andrews. Andrews, who would later become Montgomery's wife, initiated their courtship after being amused by a remark he made about her sweetness. These anecdotes offer insight into the behind-the-scenes dynamics and personal connections that contributed to the making of They Were Expendable, enriching the viewer's understanding of the film's context.